Um, when I decided to do this talk, thing is it was about pictures and Umbraco, and there are so many amazing pictures from Umbraco events. I tried my best to use as many pictures from uh, former uh, Umbraco events, most of them from Doug and a few other people. Um, so here we go. So just a little bit about me. Um, I'm technical director at uh, Crumble Dog, which is a Umbraco gold partner in London. I've been lucky enough to be a Umbraco MVP uh, four times. I've also uh, done quite a lot of work on the Umbraco core, um, things like the image cropper in 7.1 and value converters in 7.6 and health check scheduling in 7.7, it goes on and on. Um, I'm also, and it's a very important part of the Umbraco uh, ecosystem to me to be a member of the community and to go to meetups and come to events like this and talk and help people. I'm a, I call myself an Umbraco package hacker. I've made a few packages. Um, some of them successful, um, but I've also helped and fixed and contributed to a lot more of other people's packages. I'm also an Azure evangelist. In fact, some people call me Mr. Azure in the Umbraco world. I've been using Azure since the very beginning with Umbraco, um, so I have quite a lot of experience of that. Also, um, at the beginning of this year, I was appointed Umbraco documentation headmaster, which is an interesting uh, new role as part of a new Umbraco documentation curators team. Um, so if you have any questions or any ideas about Umbraco documentation, please come and find me afterwards and we can talk about anything to do with the Umbraco documentation. So um, responsive images, they arrived officially at least two years ago. And it was a bit like winning a car. Um, unfortunately, I'm not quite sure what happened, but somehow uh, overnight the car got turned upside down and it wasn't quite as good as I had hoped. Um, whenever I see a new blog post or a tweet about a new Embraco site going live, I first thing I do, I go and have a check and see if responsive images have been implemented as part of that solution. Unfortunately, still to this day, it's only the minority, maybe 10, 15%. Any website by Matt, of course, has responsive images, but. Um, the majority of them um, don't. And I think um, this is in contrast to other CMSs, um, especially some of the more well-known ones where almost every solution coming out using those CMSs has responsive images already. And I think part of the reason for this is that responsive images still is kind of quite hard to get to grips with and also can, or certainly has a perception amongst developers that it's time-consuming to implement. Um, this is an example of what we have. Um, this is using the picture element. And this has become a really famous quote about, um, that was added to, uh, as a comment to one of the first blog posts about how to implement responsive images. And it's, this is way too complex and heavy markup. Can you imagine yourselves doing this 300 times for a website? It would be an absolute nightmare. And while this standard um, exists, it is pretty complicated to actually get to grips with, especially from um, a .NET developer perspective, let alone a front-end developer. Um, and quite honestly, it is a big mess. And of course, the guy who wrote that quote, even though it was a few years ago, is absolutely right. But as developers doing web solutions, over time, we begin to accept the complexity. Com complexity. And I want responsive images. I think it's a great thing. And the result is something that we need. We need the graphics to be optimized for the device and also for the size that are being displayed at. So if we accept what we have, um, something people often say is images are really simple, but it's definitely never been the case. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember web save colors, but um, back in the late 90s, we could only use these colors in images on the web. And in fact, back in the 90s, there was a whole series of books written just about implementing um, images on the web. Some of them were over 400 pages just in how to implement an image on a web page. So how did it happen? How did we end up with such a mess? It's kind of, it's kind of a bit of a mystery, but um, I've been doing some digging and trying to work out exactly what was going on. So the W3, W3C reformed the Responsive Images Working Group, which is now called the Responsive Image Community Group. Um, and they had started having first ideas in 2012 about how to implement Responsive Image Standard. And they were working towards HTML 5.1, which was to be published in 2016. But in 2014, I don't know how many people actually know this, there was a bit of, uh, in fact, a lot of turbulence within W3C, within the HTML working group. 
and some of the key players locked horns and it ended up in community in a big vote about which direction to go in and some of the big players lost the vote by a very narrow, mar narrow margin and so they split and these players were Apple, Mozilla and Opera um, so they decided at that point that they were going to leave the W3C um, effort to publish HTML standards and they formed what's Waterwork, which is the Web Hybrid Tech Application Technology Working Group. So later on, um, these three organizations were also joined by the um, editors from Microsoft and Google. But um, what they started to do was to publish something called the HTML Living Standard. So this is an ongoing, always developing, never published, never completed, but always relevant standard. What a lot of people don't know is that W3C, in the meantime, actually fork this because it's open source. So from time to time, W3C decide, oh, we're going to fork the Watwig specification and call it HTML 5.1 or HTML 5.1 second or 5.2 even, which is what we have now, and maybe HTML 5.3 at some point later next year. Um, but literally, this is just a fork of what, what we're doing. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of people and a lot of developers still believe it's W3C doing all this work, but in fact it isn't. Um, the good news is, from a responsive images point of view, is within the living standard and within um, all of these uh, versions, we have a good specification that we can follow to actually implement responsive images. So the use cases. There are mainly two use cases for responsive images. 90% of the time, we're looking at resolution switching. So this is whereby an image is served in different pixel density and different sizes based off the space in which it's going to be displayed. The other use case is art direction. Um, this is mostly used for cropping, so in this example here, whereby in a certain display um, response point, we are on a share like this, and as it goes like this. The other use case for art direction is often when images contain text, which we can debate whether they should or shouldn't, but often they do. And obviously, if that scales down to a really small device or whatever, you won't be able to read the text. So that's where art direction can be used. So within responsive images, image tag is still at the heart of everything. So within the specification, we've added all these other aspects, such as picture, source, media, source set, type, and sizes. But still, at the end of the day, is the image tag in the middle. So the first one, and probably the most important is source set. So source set adds an attribute to the image tag, um, just here. And what it does is it defines a list of comma-separated images, uh, image URLs, followed by a pixel width and or a pixel density. This is called an X descriptor. So in this case, it says, um, if the device can handle and can show images at two times pixel density, so iPhones or whatever, then this one will be selected. So this is the most simple use of source set. Um, if there's no width specified, then infinity is assumed. If there's no density, then one times pixel density is assumed. So we can provide a list of images at different sizes, of different widths, and the browser can choose. The question is, how will the browser pick the right one? Um, sizes come to the rescue. So just like in Braco Man here, in addition to when we use source set, we also need to use the sizes attribute. Um, so the, the, the sizes um, length, CSS length, which is this one here, well, media conditions are paired with, with CSS length. Now, these can be absolute or relative. Um, and you can add multiples of these. So we've got the first one here and then another one here. And then it's always followed by a default, which is this one here. So this allows the browser to make decisions as to which, um, which source to actually display. Um, in the future, browsers might use other things to determine this. So by providing the source set list and the sizes, we're not saying explicitly to the browser which image it should decide. So there are some prototypes and things around of browsers where they actually use things like bandwidth and other things that they can actually do. So the specification allows browser vendors to come up with other ideas about how they should be choosing which image to select. But currently, they, they just pretty much do exactly what you tell them through these attributes. Picture 
So the picture element is probably the most famous thing or the thing people think of the most, although actually in most cases the image source set is the, um, the main thing used. Um, picture's main usage, I guess, is art direction, um, which, as I showed before, is where you can have different um, aspect ratios and then a fallback image so that you can do the sort of different sizes, um, can determine which um, image to show. However, I think actually one of the more interesting, and certainly from my perspective, uses of the picture element is for the types. So the, the um, types uh, attribute, which is used in conjunction with the source element, allows you to define multiple different types of images. So in this example here, we have a JPEG XR. Um, so like many things, different browser vendors have implemented different image formats, which are, uh, we call them modern, and some of them are quite old. For instance, JPEG 2000 here is 2000, but they're all far superior to any existing image, so such as JPEG. All three of them, you've got JPEG 2000, WebP, and JPEG XR. Um, XR is on Edge, this is in Chrome, and this is in Safari. So each of them have their own, um, will give you a far better result in terms of bandwidth and um, lossness of the image. So you get um, a much better image um, being displayed to your users, but there's no standard, and they've all chosen different paths for various reasons. Um, but within the specification, we can allow for that. So if we not only produce our images 300 times, we can then times them by three to produce each format. And then we have to have the JPEG fallback for IE, of course. So there's a lot of images, um, a lot of craziness. Um, and that's a different debate, I guess, image formats themselves. So how many images do I actually need? Well, a lot, probably. Um, there's, there's this famous quote here, sensible jumps in file size to match screen dimensions and or density, um, which is by one of the people who worked on the standard. But how can you work that out? How many images should you produce for a particular image placement? There is this fantastic website called responsivebreakpoints.com, um, whereby you can upload your image, and it will make loads of quite clever suggestions as to how many different images you should produce. Um, one other point, save for web should die. I've been going to conferences for maybe, I don't know how many years, a lot of years. Um, about images and, and formats, and pretty much every time it's Photoshop, safer web should die. In Photoshop 2015, they added legacy. Um, the reason it should die is because it produces really quite terrible assets. Um, also, it's, it's trying to encourage people that they need to go through this process to produce the thousands of images they need to produce all the time using Photoshop. Um, so hopefully it might die one day. Something that might come in the future, um, and is actually available in Chrome, but only Chrome, is something called Client Hints. Um, so this is whereby when the browser makes the request um, for the image, it can send additional headers. So this actually can contain the width at which the image is going to be displayed. So this is where Chrome itself, or the browser itself, is working out my computed size for this image will be 300, or 230 in this example here. Um, and the viewport width will be 460. This is, this is really good, because this is heading towards us actually being able to produce images, or the standard itself, assuming that the server has capability to produce images. Um, as I said, this is available. It's been in Chrome since, I think, version 44, so quite a long time. But um, currently, there's no plans to implement it in any other browser. Um, so that's the standard as it is in HTML. Um, the problem with it is it's pretty daunting, and quite honestly, it's not for humans. If you can imagine your average Umbraco site, how many images you might have to have somebody produce to actually implement responsive images in all those formats, it would be a hell of a lot. So yeah, it's pretty scary. Um, so what we actually need is a CMS and some graphics processing software. So we can use a standard but have all the heavy lifting and the hard work done on the server side. Thankfully, I think everybody here knows about Umbraco, and hopefully everyone knows it includes something called Image Processor. So a quick story about responsive images and Umbraco. Four years ago, I wrote this blog post. Amazingly, it was four years ago, um, which was how to um, use a JavaScript library called slimage.js, um, 
with the brand new Embraco cropper in 7.1 that we had added. Um, it was a really good complementary JavaScript library to a .NET graphics processing package called Image Resizer. Um, and it worked amazingly well, you know, well long before HTML 5.1 was published. And what it assumed is, because it knew it was a JavaScript library that worked on the client, but it knew the server could produce an image of any size and density, um, it still, even to this day, in many ways has advantages over um, the standard itself. In August um, 2014, I released a package called Slimzy. Um, we now call this Slimzy version 1, which was the idea was to try and make it really, really easy for developers to implement responsive images on a Braco site. So as easy as we could, using this image JS, because the majority of the time people doing this type of work are not front-end developers. It's just like, output an image tag, please, and then we'll style it. So we did our best to make it as easy as we could. And I think we made it pretty easy. Um, you just had to add this JavaScript library here, and then you replaced any get crop URL with either get responsive image URL or get responsive crop URL. This one was for when you had predefined crops, and this one was when you wanted to dynamically create the crop on the fly. Um, it was pretty damn successful. I'd say Simsy one was downloaded over 20,000 times. And I've seen still to this day countless websites I look, and they're still using, um, using it to this day. Uh, it even actually Slimzy one did feature in the uh, Code Garden 2014 keynote, because at the time it was still to have responsive images so easily within the CMS was, was um, fairly forward thinking, and there weren't any other CMSs at the time that were doing it. So that brings us on to Slimzy 2. So we started working on Slimzy 2 in August 2015. Um, the objective of it was to utilize the HTML responsive image format, but try and still make it as simple as we achieved with Slimzy 1. Um, and the, we've just released the RTM today, in fact, a few hours ago. So Slimzy version 2 is now out there and live. Um, we've been through four betas, um, had a lot of great feedback and contributions as well. Um, so the reason and the thing that made it possible to do this is a fantastic JavaScript li library called Lazy Sizes, which was um, written by a guy called Alexander Farkas, who works for a company called Boffin House in Berlin, so it's German. Um, he's also quite famous for being the maintainer of HTML5 Shiv. I don't know if anybody ever remembers that library that we used to have to use to support browsers that didn't support HTML5. The thing about this library that's absolutely brilliant well, lots of things. Um, it detects any visibility changes. Um, so any changes to the images themselves um, get loaded. I should say, in addition to helping us to support responsive image sizes, the key's in the name, it also implements lazy loading. So when you use this library, not only are your images responsive will be responsive, they're also lazy loaded, which means that they're not loaded until they're needed. Um, it's future-proof, it supports source set and picture. What it does fantastically is it gives us back the separation of concerns. So one of the issues we have, or the big issue with the sizes attribute, is that we're actually mixing content into our markup effectively. Um, so what it, by giving us, it, adds, it allows us to say sizes equals auto. And then we don't have to worry about any of those media queries or the widths or anything like that. We just do sizes. So we get back our separation of concerns. Um, it's performance, it's very fast. It has all the hooks for JavaScript and CSS if you want to change anything or extend it. Um, it has this intelligent prefetch, which is the thing whereby if you have a very long page, like a blog post or whatever, as you start to scroll down, if you look in network tools on Chrome, you'll actually see it starting to load ahead. And it loads about one and a half scrolls ahead. So actually, if you never scroll down the page, it never loads those images at the bottom. That's the, the intelligent lazy loading. Um, it's pretty lightweight, it's very small. Um, one of the other great things is it, it, it ticks all the SEO boxes. It doesn't hide any images or assets from Google, which is an important part of um, what we're implementing. And the magic behind it, if you do sizes equals auto, in the same way as Slimage Dares did all those time ways back, it calculates the computed size of the display. So it will generate that size specifically for the size that the CSS has determined the image should display, taking into account pixel density as well. So this is how you do it. We, load, we add in the lazy sizes, JS, 
then we replace get crop URL on our images with this one. So here we just do data source set, data source set equals URL dot get source set URLs. And then it's exactly the same as you can see here, the parameters. Um, um, this one has something also on here for a fallback. So this is the image that will get displayed, hence why it's just get crop URL for any browser like IE that doesn't support source set. Um, and I think we've managed it. It's incredibly simple. I hope you agree. It's really not much more work than doing this to doing this for most of the, most of the time. Um, so this is what it renders. So from that, from this tiny little thing here, you actually view the source on your page, you'll see something as huge as this. This is why it was a nightmare to do manually. If you can imagine having to do this every time, obviously there's a lot of query strings in here because it's doing the image processor, um, all the different image processor commands to create the correct sizes. Um, by default, in the same, following the same pattern as SlimageJS, um, we generate an image every 160 pixels. This covers the majority of device sizes. So from 160, 320, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up. And it will go up to the size of the source image. So if you've got a huge source image, it will go up to a maximum, I think it's by default, it's about 2,000. But both of these settings are configurable if you want to change them. If you decided you wanted to know, do an image every 100. Um, this, then if you look in, the, um, in Chrome uh, developer tools, to see what's going on, you'll actually see the sizes attribute. So whereby we actually put sizes auto in our um, view, what you actually look, when you actually see it render time, it's actually calculated the size. So this, the lazy sizes has worked out that the display of this image is 259 pixels on this device, which means that the HTML can do its thing and it will select the correct image for that size. Um, another feature um, that you can implement with lazy sizes is LQIP or low quality image placeholder. Um, there are pros and cons to doing this. Um, you do it just by adding a source attribute to the image, so an old, like a standard image source attribute. Um, and what you try and do is you make this image really, really low quality, like as low as you can without it being completely stupid. Um, and you can see here, this is fairly pixelated. Um, this image is loaded first before the lazy loaded. So this image will load, and then as the image is properly la um, lazy load over the top, they'll get replaced. Um, this is for things whereby people want the images to show in a certain place immediately. It's also a bit of a trick for HTML validation. So if HTML validation comes along, it will find a source tag, um, and it will find that image is incredibly well optimized, so page speed will give it 100% score straight away because the image is absolutely tiny. Um, There's a bit of a trick, it's a byproduct. Um, the con to it, obviously, is it's loading this image at 2K in this case, which is effectively disposable. So you're slightly increasing the bandwidth by doing this. Um, it is optional. Um, so the tagline for Slimzy has always been effortly responsive and lazy images. Um, obviously, we now do it with lazy sizes and Umbraco. So somebody said to me, well, how quickly can you actually implement um, Slimzy on a single web page? So this is a single take uh, screen capture of me doing just that. So this is the page from the starter kit. Um, the only thing I've replaced um, is I switched, I added the change the models builder to using DLL so Visual Studio doesn't complain. And um, also those images of Matt and others, um, by default in some reason the starter kit are background, so I changed them to Im images to begin with. Um, so obviously this is showing you how to do it um, via NuGet. As you can see actually in this live capture, the majority of the time is waiting for NuGet to actually install. So I'm just going to build it. So I'll make sure the DLL is there so that when I add it into my view, it doesn't think the extension doesn't exist. So I'm just going to go hit to GitHub and go to the documentation 
and copy the um, sample. In the sample here, it also includes picture fill JS, which is optional. It's a, it's a, it's a, it would mean that IE less than 11 would be able to render this. Um, it actually run, render responsive images, even though it doesn't really support them. Um, without it, it would fall back. So it's optional whether you want to include picture fill. It's very important to ensure that your images have display block. If your images don't have display block, the browser won't actually correctly calculate the width of them. So if your images don't have display block, you, um, you'll find some weird results. So I'm just going to copy the um, get source set uh, um, extension methods. I'm just going to copy the I made a little mistake here, I think. I added extra bracket somehow. And I copy the sizes in. So these dimensions um, used here are actually only used to calculate the ratio. So unless it goes to a fallback scenario, really all those do is calculate the, the ratio between width and height. So in theory, I think in this case, I could have actually put 11 and 10, and the result would have been the same, but not for the fallback. So hopefully, you see Visual Studio is caught up with the uh, package. So obviously, this is a, just a single page on a single site, but this is from. Um, installing the package all the way through to the final result. You can see we actually have implemented um, image, uh, full response images there in just over three minutes on that single page, which is pretty um, good going, I think. So how about adding WebP alternatives using picture in Umbraco? So here we have another example. Um, in this case, Along with Slimzy, and this is just one particular way of doing it, we've included Slimzy Helper, which is a razor helper. It's here. It's quite long. Um, just because we, we found that when we're implementing these over and over again and we want to do this WebP um, alternative, that um, we end up doing the same thing and again and again and again, which is picture, you know, JPEGs or um, WebP or whatever it might be. And also we want the low quality thing. So we've just wrapped this up into a helper. So it's fully customizable. You just take this and put it into your own solution. And it means you can do something like this. So you can just do Simsy helper render picture. Um, you pass in the URL helper and the um, iPublish content and the dimensions. Um, so it makes it really, really easy to do. So we'll see a demo of doing this. The first thing we need to do, and I don't know if people know this, is a WebP plugin for image processor. So literally, you have in processor in Umbraco already. You literally can just search for image processor web, a plugins WebP on NuGet and install this package. Um, there isn't currently a JPEG XR or JPEG 2000 plugin, but um, it's completely possible that it could be created. The, um, the, the sort of the clever stuff that generates those is all available in C Sharp. So it would, it could, it's completely possible that somebody could create those plugins. Um, yeah, the WebP one already exists and works really well. So we've installed the WebP image processor plugin. I'm just going to add um, the Simsy helper. So I'm just going to go to GitHub and copy the Simsy helper. Interesting, I've already seen two examples of people who have taken this helper and customized it as well, which is always interesting to see what people are doing slightly differently with it. So now we have the helper within our solution. We can actually use that helper. And there's an example here of it in use, so you saw it before. So we're going to take that, go back to our, our view where we did our source sets a minute ago. I'm just going to replace um, that with the helper itself. Make sure I got it right. I'll delete the image. So now if we re refresh the page, we won't just have um, responsive images. We'll actually, even using Chrome here, we'll actually have the images shown responsively using WebP format. So the bandwidth is going to be as pretty much as for Chrome 
pretty much as good as you can get. So you can see here we've got picture element, and if we're looking at network tools, let me refresh it. We'll see we're actually serving type WebP images. So while the source was a large JPEG, hopefully it was massive. The bigger the better. We always tell our editors just upload the biggest you've got because we'll do all the hard work. We'll do we'll let it generate all the types, all the densities for you. Um, we'll see that yeah. So we've actually done pretty much for Chrome as good as you can get. If you use Google Lighthouse for your performance testing, you've now ticked the use WebP optimization box just by doing that, which is one of the recommendations in Google Lighthouse now. Um, yeah, straightforward. What about rich text editors? Yes, it's a good point because um, we went through all that process. I can't remember beta one, beta two, and then someone said, yeah, yeah, but I've got a blog and I've got loads of images in the rich text editor. How can we handle those? Um, here's an example of it here. This is on our own blog, in fact, where we had this image in here. Um, so what we did is we added an HTML helper. So HTML, convert image to source set. Um, so currently, this won't do the picture element. It will just convert, it'll upgrade an image from a standard image to a source set image. But that's obviously something you could do yourself. Um, but so it just means you could just take the, the value of this rich text editor, just put it into this uh, method, and you'll get responsive images on the front end of your site um, for all the images embedded in the rich text editor. Does Slimzy handle art direction? No, it doesn't. Currently, Simsy does only is only doing the um, is is only doing resolution switching, but it's something we have been thinking about and been working on for version three because using um, predefined crops in Embraco, there's absolutely no reason well we can't support art direction in a simple way, although it's never going to be as simple a concept to implement. But if anybody has any ideas how we should do that, I would love to hear them because I think it would be a great thing to do to make sure we've got the, all the capabilities available to Umbraco implementations. I say thanks to the people who've worked on this project. It's been, it's been going on for quite a long time, particularly my colleague William Phillips in Canada, who has done a lot of work on SIMD2. Um, Thomas Morris, who did a lot of feedback um, on it and has even added a few pull requests. Mark, who um, from Germany, who actually helped inspire the original version, and Doug, who actually named it because we couldn't think of a name. Um, so I don't think there are any excuses. I don't think there are any excuses why Embraco implementation shouldn't have responsive images. It should be the norm. Um, I hope hope we've done enough through the package and through trying to explain why people should do it that and made it so simple that everyone hopefully will do it because there is really no excuse and we don't want other CMSs when people do comparisons to say, yeah, but that CMS always outputs responsive images as standard and Braco developers should be able to do it as standard too. Uh, space, quick thanks for the, pre the, the um, tools that we've used in the presentation, Sly Carnival for the slides, all these great people who gave me permission to use their pictures. And thank you. I hope you've learned something. And I hope you'll all do responsive images in your Umbraco solutions from now on. And if you have any questions, please fire them at me.